Now. Hey everyone, welcome to this video on recursion. So recursion is a topic that I think uh, throws a lot of people off. It's kind of notorious. Actually, the very first teaching job I had, the first interview, required uh, applicants to basically do a sample teach on recursion. That was the topic that all the other instructors had decided was a good benchmark of how well, how well someone could teach, how good someone could teach. So what I'm going to do now is teach the basics of recursion. Whether you're comfortable with JavaScript or Python or Ruby, recursion uh, conceptually is the same. So I'm going to try and avoid any particular syntax. I will have a little bit of JavaScript at the end to show some debugging tools. What do you want? Uh, but most of this is going to be language agnostic. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing I want to explain is that recurs recursion is just an approach to writing a solution. So we could have a, a given problem, like uh, something really simple. Sum up all the numbers between 1 and 100. What most of us would do, or a lot of people, their first instinct would be to use a loop. And you could write a solution in what's known as the iterative way, using iteration, a loop. But you could also write a solution that worked that was not iterative, there's no loops involved, and instead it's recursive. And that's what we're going to kind of get into in this video, how this other approach works. But first, let's start with a, a short little story. So this is the way that I was taught recursion back in high school, and also in college, my, uh, one of my instructors did the exact same story. I think it's sort of a standard computer science lesson. So in like 30 seconds, I'll explain it. So back in well, some time, <laughs> some fantasy world, there was a boy named Martin and an angry dragon named the dragon, both symbolized by emojis here. Okay, so one day the, the elders of the village ask Martin to go up to talk to this wise old dragon. And they want him to, to take a list of numbers for some reason and ask if any of the numbers are odd. So he has this list of numbers, and he's going to ask this dragon. Apparently, the, the elders, the humans, are unable to determine if numbers are odd. They have to depend on a dragon to do it. So he goes up with this list, and he says, Excuse me, Mr. Dragon, are any of these numbers odd? And the very angry dragon says, I'm sorry, boy, I'll only tell you if the first number in that list is odd. But that's not what Martin wants. He says, But I need to know if any of the numbers in the list are odd, not just the first number. And then the dragon gets angrier, and he says, Sorry, boy, I'll only, I'll only tell you if the first number is odd. Only the first number in the list. So Martin sits down and has a real good think. He says, hmm. And then he has a solution. He goes to the dragon. He says, okay, what about the first number in this list? And he gives him the original list. And the dragon says, that's not odd. Because it's not. It's even. Then Martin comes back with a different list. He says, what about this? Is the first number in this list odd? And the dragon says, nope, not odd. He does it again. What about the first number in this list? Nope, the dragon says, it's not odd. One more time, not odd. And then finally, he comes back and says, what about the first number in this list? And the dragon says, that's an empty list, you moron. There isn't a number in there. Nothing can be odd. And then Martin says, aha. So all the numbers are even in that list. Nothing is odd. And the dragon says, I never said that. So Martin starts explaining it. He says, well, I gave you the whole list. You said the first number is not odd. So then I shrunk it down a bit, a smaller problem. I just removed that first number, and I gave you a new list. And I asked, is the first number odd? And you said, not odd. And I kept doing this until I gave you an empty list. And we know that if the empty list has nothing in it, this next list had no odds, so the first number had no odds. That means the second list has no odds because it just consists of this number plus a new number, and so on. All the way up, we know there are no odds. And all that you told me was the first number, if it was odd for a given list. And I just had to repeat it with different smaller lists. So, no odds. <laughs> we were just dying to know. And Martin is a village hero. He goes back and he lives a splendid life. And the dragon smugly says, Congratulations, you discovered recursion. And then Martin is, is upset and he says, wait, you knew this the whole time? What, what is this? Some sort of parable for a computer science class? It is, Martin. Anyway, so what is recursion? Why, did, why do computer science instructors like to use this story? It's a simple explanation of, of a more complicated idea. Recursion is just a process, and when we're talking about code, it's a function that calls itself over and over and over again, but it calls itself, which is something that if you're not familiar with recursion, it can seem very odd. 
a function calling itself, but we'll, we'll get there in good time. Okay, so here's how recursive functions work. All that you do is you write a function that calls itself with a smaller piece of input each time until you reach something that we call a base case. So in that example with Martin and the dragon, we kept, or Martin kept asking about a smaller and smaller list until we hit an empty list, at which point we're done. So it's important to realize there has to be this base case. The base case is where the recursion ends. So you call a function and it calls itself, and then it calls itself, and it calls itself, but that can't go on forever, and we'll see what, what would happen in that case. It's called uh, stack overflow. Basically, it's an, the recursive version of an infinite loop. So there has to be a rock bottom. You have to hit rock bottom. Everything has to stop. There's a base case. So those are the two pieces. We have a base case, and then we have a smaller input, something that is getting us closer to our base case, if that makes sense. I'm going to show you a couple of examples that hopefully uh, explain it in some more detail. All right, let's take a look at our first recursive function. So it's a very simple one called countdown. And all that it does is print out numbers. So you pass in a number like four, and it's going to count down. So it's going to print four, then three, then two, then one. And then it's going to print all done at the end. And the first thing I'll highlight is that we have a recursive call right here. So it's called countdown. That's our function name. And we're calling countdown inside of it. Second of all, we have a base case, which is right here. And this is checking. If we've hit the end of our countdown, we're going to console.log. We're going to print out all done and then return. And I'll explain why that return is so important. Let's go run this. So here I have it written up as a snippet in Chrome. And I'm going to call it with countdown pass in four as num. So if I execute this, we get four, three, two, one, all done. Let's print it out. So if we step through what happens, we call countdown of four. And countdown of four, this part doesn't run because num is four. So we console.log num. So we print out four. So we can just show that if I'm typing it. This is my equivalent of console.log. Then we subtract one from num. So num is now three. And we call countdown with three. So we could basically write it this way. So countdown of three runs. This is not true because num is three. So we print out three. And then we call countdown again on this line. After we subtract one from num, we're calling countdown of two. Countdown of two is going to run. This is still false, so nothing happens. So we console.log num. And num in this case is two. Almost there. Do the same thing. So we subtract one from num. It's one. Countdown of one. Okay. Still, this is not true. Finally, we print out one. And then we subtract one from num. So num is now zero. And we're going to call countdown of zero. What happens now is we hit the base case. So we call countdown of zero. Well, num is less than or equal to zero. Yes, that's true. So we console.log all done. And then we return. And return is going to end our recursion. Because if we didn't have this return statement here, our code would just continue. And we would console.log num. And num would be subtracted, or be subtracted. We'd subtract one from num and print it out. And then we would call countdown again. And we'd go into negative numbers. So actually, if I do remove that, and you can see what happens here. Oh my gosh. We just keep going and going and going. <laughs> it's not good. So Chrome froze, <laughs> I had to restart, uh, and I'm back now. Let's take a look at our second example. So this one is called sum range. Sum range is going to take in a number, and it's going to return all of the numbers between 0 summed up until that number. So if we pass in 3, it should return 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is going to be 6. So actually, I said between 0, uh, technically it stops at 1. So it doesn't matter because you know, you add zero and it doesn't matter, but three plus two plus one, or if we passed in five, it would be five plus four plus three plus two plus one. And the way that it works in this case, we're not using a loop. I'm doing it recursively. So if you take a look, can you identify the base case? Do you notice the smaller or the, the different input? I don't really know what to call that part. The second component where we're calling the recursive call, we're calling some range spoiler on this line with a slightly smaller input each time through until we hit our base case. So we start out with num, let's say at three, we're going to check is num equal to one? No, it's not. So we're going to return 
three, the num, plus summing the range of num minus one, which would be two. So then we're going to call it again. In sum range with two, this is still false. So we return two plus sum range of one. And this time, num is equal to one, so we return one. So I'm going to step through exactly what happens here. Uh, if you're not familiar with the call stack, I have a video on this. It's I only have a couple videos at this point on the channel, and one of them is on the JavaScript call stack. It applies to other languages as well, but I think it will be helpful if you watch that if you've never heard of the call stack. But I'm going to step through what happens. So when we call some range of five, for example, very first thing that happens this is not true. So we return five plus some range of four. So some range of five is added to the call stack, but it doesn't know what to return yet because some range of four hasn't returned anything. So it's waiting. It's going to return five plus whatever we get from some range of four. So then some range of four is called, and that returns four plus some range of three. So it's waiting, and we keep going until we get to some range of one, in which case num is equal to one, so we return the number one. So this returns one, which means that some range of two can now return because it was waiting. So it sum it returns two plus some range of one, which was one, and then that returns. So this can now return, and this can return, and we can get our final answer. All right. So I'm in the Chrome debugger. Uh, I've I've written the code up, and I've simplified it to be some range of three. If I execute it, we get six. Three plus two plus one. And here's a little diagram I wrote up to explain what's happening. When we call some range of three. This line doesn't run. That's our base case. Num is three, not one. So we return three plus some range of two. So this is what's going to be returned, but we're waiting on some range of two. Okay. So some range of two is called, and that returns two plus some range of two minus one, which is one. And that's finally when we hit our base case. Some range of one is called, and num is one. So this is true, which means we return one. So when we return one here, suddenly this function call was waiting. Return two plus one. We can fill in the blank. So then that gives us three, right? Some range of two returned three. So then we can now return three plus some range of two, which was three. So then we get return three plus three, which is six, which is what's returned from our initial function call. That's how we got six. So if we step through this, I'll add a breakpoint and execute our code. Take a look. Take a look at the call stack here. You'll see that the first thing that happens is some range is added. That's our sum range of three. We're right here, and it gets to this return. Return num. So it's going to return three plus sum range of two. And watch right here. You'll see we get a new sum range added. So this is now added on top of the call stack, and you can see num is two in this function call. So this is false. We move on. And it's going to return two plus what we have here, two plus some range of one. All right, and you'll see another some range added to the call stack, where num is now one. So we're finally here, and this our base case is true. We have to have this rock bottom. This is our endpoint, just like with Martin and the Dragon. The empty list was the endpoint. In this case, it's hitting one. So we return the value of one, and now you'll see that this returns one. So it's popped off the stack. Just a second. There we go. And then that means that some range of two, which was waiting for some range of one, can now return. So it will pop off. And then finally, our initial function call, some range of three, can return. And then we finally get six returned down here. The last thing I'd like to do is show you a very uh, common error that occurs with recursion called a stack overflow. So this occurs when there is no base case, or you don't hit the base case ever. So if I got rid of this line, some range is going to just continue on forever. It's going to return. If we did three, it's going to try and do some range of、uh, return three plus some range of two, and so on. But as soon as we hit one, there's no longer a base case. So that would return one plus some range of zero, and then that in turn would try and do negative one and negative two, and it would keep going. It doesn't go forever because our our browser has a limit. I think in Chrome it's around sixteen thousand stack frames. So you'll see what happens when I execute this. Uncaught range error. Maximum call stack size exceeded. So it doesn't actually say stack overflow in some other languages. That's the actual error error name or message. In Chrome it says maximum call stack size exceeded. 
Um, if I add a breakpoint again and we watch what happens, if I step through this in our call stack, uh, you'll see we just keep getting these function calls added. Num is negative 20, negative 25. I'm not going to click this 16,000 times, but that's roughly the number of frames that we would get. And each one of these is waiting on. So, you know, this one's waiting on this to return, which is waiting on this and so on, but it's never going to return a value. So that's the really important part about the base case. You need to have a base case in your recursive function. Otherwise, it just keeps calling itself over and over and over. It's not good enough to have a smaller piece of the puzzle, num minus one. I mean, you need that, but you also need to have an endpoint. You need that rock bottom. So to recap, every recursive function just calls itself. That's what makes it recursive. It's a function calling itself. And recursive functions should always have a base case, rock bottom, as we've talked about. And then there needs to be the recursive call, where the function it calls itself with a different input, a smaller piece usually, until you hit that base case and you stop. So I know that there is a lot in this video. If you've never heard of recursion or you're just learning it here, there's no way that you could watch one video and you know feel comfortable with it. This is something that takes time. Uh, even experienced developers still have problems thinking recursively. It's one thing to look at a recursive solution and walk through it. It's another to come up with that solution yourself. So take your time. The goal of this video is not to make you an expert. It's just to introduce you to the idea, the concept of recursion. So hopefully you can explain what it is and maybe walk through some code, but it might take some more time to actually start you know, writing your own recursive functions. All right, I'll be quiet.